back to the uh, first phase of uh, the Metro bus system, what improvements would you see that uh, incorporating? So really what that is based on is in Quebec City, it's a, it's a non-grid type city. It's actually an amalgamation of 13 cities all in one. Um, and so what they did in 1996 is they reorganized their entire bus system around these two major arteries crisscrossing the city. And so it's called the 800, the 801. And they do this in Vancouver as well. And the improvements they saw was a really a 5% increase in the number of riders actually taking the bus in the first year alone. And it was one of the only jurisdictions in Canada that had seen over that 20 year period, since 1996 almost, for almost that 20 year period, an actual increase in the riders year after year after year because it's so much more efficient. And what the buses do is they come every uh, 5 to 12 minutes depending on the time of day. If it's rush hour they even come sometimes sooner than that. They just rush by, there's no schedule. But you just stand out there and you know it's going to be there. The improvement to the system is everything hooks up to it. And here in Winnipeg we've just recently decided to do a transportation master plan. But my concern is we haven't taken the appropriate time to consider what's being done in other jurisdictions to look what's actually occurred around the world and where they have been successful in producing a system which is cheap and efficient. And the efficiencies are really uh, that I didn't even, uh, when I was living in Quebec City, for instance, I would just get on the buses every morning to go to the army or go to the university where I was working at some, uh, during some periods as well. Uh, I knew many students, many business people would take the bus because it's an efficient way of getting downtown. But the great thing about it is you're not waiting for an hour or an hour and a half for some bus to show up. And what sort of costs would you see associated with that? Well, the costs are the reorganization, so it's really human resources. You're asking, uh, you're asking the employees of City Transit now to come up with a plan in order to produce that, perhaps uh, some study, obviously, how they went about doing it, and mapping out where people live, where they want to go, and who actually uses it. The problem with the BRT is when you talk to a young lady, and I have a student like that at the University of Manitoba, or I had a student, she was on welfare, and she's very intelligent, single mother of two young children, and she wanted to go to the U of M to take nursing. Extremely intelligent lung, lung lady. She could do it. No problem with the academics. It takes her an hour and 15 minutes to get to the University of Manitoba by bus. She drops her kids off at school at 9 o'clock in the morning, and by the time she gets to the University of Manitoba, if the streets have been plowed properly, if ever the city has done the most basic functions, it's almost too late for her by, by the time she has to get back to pick up her kids by 3 p.m. to maintain a full course load in that period. And so what invariably happens is she can't complete her degree, she can't get student aid, and so today she is no longer a student at the University of Manitoba. She is not reaching her full potential. She is in fact still on welfare, being as good a mother as she possibly can and not breaking that poverty cycle. And so this is what, if you reorganize bus systems, if you think about how we do things in the city of Winnipeg, we can do things in a much more efficient way. It's not about saving money, it's about offering better service to citizens. And so instead of you take the existing bus routes and you actually computer model them to find out where people live, where they want to go, and who uses it, so that everyone in the city can benefit. Would there be technology improvements as well, like priority signals? Uh, well, what happens is you actually use existing infrastructures, so the existing roads, and then what they've done in Quebec City in a number of places is actually synchronize the lights. So the buses, all of a sudden, it's not that they have priority, but you synchronize the lights so the buses run more efficiently. The cars also benefit. Uh, but uh, what they have is diamond lanes during rush hour. Now, they also allow taxis and people who carpool to also take those diamond lanes. And the, 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 the idea is also to allow a greater number of people to then start moving along those routes and create that greater efficiency for the movement of goods, services, and people within the public transportation system.